Hi guys, this is Hunter, and welcome to my first Hardcore Nuzlocke video. A few months back, I was doing a lot of streaming and content creation, and one of the things I did on stream was sort of Pokemon Fire Red Hardcore Nuzlocke. That means we are going to try to beat Fire Red while following some rules that make the game a bit more difficult and a bit more fun. The rules are on screen now, the most important few being we can only catch our first encounter on each route, if a Pokemon faints it can no longer be used, no items can be used in battle, we are playing on set mode, and a whiteout is a reset. We have to restart the entire game, and I will touch on other rules as needed. I started my first attempt back in September, and that first one was a failure. I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining it, but it did die at the rival fight at Nugget Bridge, which is not a hard battle, I just played it really bad, and I've seemingly lost the footage I saved of it. So, when I came back to streaming recently, I was determined to succeed and I started up a new save file of Pokemon Fire Red. I named myself TPK and our rival, Stinky. Oak gives us a Pokemon, I choose Charmander, accepting that RNG might make the first gym an absolute slobber knocker because Charmander is the best starter in this generation. I nickname him Agumon because our theme is Digimon for this run, so we will be naming all Pokemon after Digimon, the better series. We beat our rival, change to set mode, and start out on our journey. After getting Pokeballs, we get our first encounter, a Pidgey, which we name Beomon. On Route 2, we get a Rattata, and we name it Chumon, because, you know. I decide to catch a Pokemon on Route 23 because we do not get many encounters before Brock, and my current team is not looking good to face him, even though we technically could catch something stronger later on in the game. Oh, yes. It's the- oh wait, shit, I have one Pokeball. Oh no. Thankfully, I catch the Mankey, and we name it Edamon, after the best villain from the original Digimon anime dub. Hey, you measly little Digidestined humans, thank you very much, hello! I get my hands on a Caterpie, which is pretty good versus Brock. Butterfree knowing a Psychic-type move is helpful, but is very weak to Rock-type moves. After making it through Viridian Forest, I am met with the realization that we do not get another encounter before the gym, because this is still considered Route 2, meaning I must beat Brock with my current team, which is not impossible, but bad luck could mean an early end to my run. And well... Uh... Is he sand attacking? No! Oh. Our first death of the run, a loss that really could have been prevented from skipping this trainer, but I was getting lazy grinding at this point. I finished grinding the rest of the team, and we challenge Brock. The plan here is simple. His Pokemon are good physical defenders, and there is no proper sturdy mechanic in this game, so we use Butterfree's Confusion to sweep him. At least, that's the plan. Opening with a crit, everything seems to be going our way. I made sure to have my XP high enough so that I leveled off the Geodude, and because my level cap is only until the battle starts, I am not over leveled here. And then I learned Sleep Powder off this level up which I used on Audix immediately allowing me to get a free attack in. I get off two confusions and I get a little unlucky, and Onyx wakes up after two turns of sleep hitting me with a Rock Tomb. In my head, I assume that Brock is going to use a potion and that I am still faster. In reality, what happens is, two Pokemon already gone, and I am now left with nothing to hit this Onix with that can do much to it. While it might be a sliver of health, I have to tank out its attacks while I finish it off. I decide Rattata is the best option and the most fodder-ish Pokemon I have. I don't know if I can... Why are these all missing? Rattata was able to dodge four out of the five Rock Tombs to hit five Tail Whips. And I know Rock Tomb is not 100% accurate, but the odds on that still must be very unlikely. With his defense to the floor, a quick attack gets me my first badge, and we have a bunch of encounters before the next gym to make up for the losses we've had. None of the trainers between here and Cerulean give us any trouble. We catch a Spearow named Patamon, purchase a Magikarp named Seedramon, catch a Geodude named Gatsuman. Papamon, Gatsuman! 
I take the dome fossil from the nerd in Mount Moon, get nothing coming out of Mount Moon because it still counts as Route 4 where we got Seedramon, and then I realize I did not have the best team for beating our rival or the gym, or so I thought. Someone in my chat mentioned that you can catch an Oddish in one of the routes past the bridge, so that had me determined to fight my rival first. My plan was this, get Chumon to 20, evolve to eradicate, and sweep with stab normal type moves, except for Pidgeotto, which Gatsumon takes care of with his rock typing. And that's exactly how it went. The only sup up was assuming Stinky would send his Pokemon in the same order that like Bul Bulbapedia lists them, which was just me being dumb. We clear the bridge with no issues, and we go to the route to the left first, and we get kind of trolled by an Abra. Then we go to the next route, and we strike gold and almost immediately throw it away. Thankfully, I do catch the Oddish, and we name it Palmon. We grind Palmon enough to evolve into Gloom, and she sweeps the gym with zero problems. As we head towards Vermilion City, we toss Seedramon in the daycare, catch Gatomon the Meowth, Sandramon the Ekans, which does not have Intimidate, so it's garbage, and uh, Leomon the Diglett. We step onto the SSN and just sweep the poop deck, and the captain is so relieved that he gives us Cut. We end up teaching Cut to Leomon, gaining access to the gym, where we clear out the trainers and I challenge Lieutenant Surge. We begin the battle with Leomon, who gets two magnitude 8s in a row, making quick work of Surge's first two Pokemon. But when Raichu takes the field, my hubris assumes too much, and Leomon is once again <laughs> sending out Gatsumon, as I likely should have done due to Leomon's abysmal defense stat. Surge's Raichu double teams and I take it out with a magnitude 7. Sloppy play keeps losing me Pokemon, but all I could do was keep moving on. Rock Tunnel is as entertaining as stumbling around the dark can be, where I miss at the chance of catching an Onyx because I don't have a solid way of weakening it and run out of Pokeballs. As we arrive in Lavender Town, I first go to fight my rival, which I just mop the floor with him with Chumon and Palmon acting as the MVPs. The road to Celadon, especially Route 7, is swamped with trainers, so a misstep could have me in a battle I'm not exactly ready for, but Route 7 also gives us an amazing encounter in Growlithe. Like Ekans, it can have the ability Intimidate, which is just an amazing ability, but it could also have the ability Flash Fire, which sucks. Due to the Pokemon I had caught previously, Growlithe is the only eligible encounter on this route, so we can run around until we find one. I wait in anticipation, I don't use any emulator speed up, and there it is. That's what daddy likes to see. I put my wonderful boy to sleep, and he gives no resistance entering his ball. Welcome home, Gururman. You will be the best of us. Celadon is a big point in the game. We are given an Eevee, which we name Alphamon, we get access to the game corner, the department store, and I realize we have to take pitiful old Gatomon to the gym to battle because I refuse to teach anyone else cut. But before that, I buy a Leaf, Water, and Firestone for Palmon, Alphamon, and Gururmon respectively. After grinding for a bit, but not all the way to the level cap because I am lazy and overconfident, I challenge Erica. She leads Victory Bell against my Agumon. My Ember does seemingly exactly half but retaliates by paralyzing me. This is no big deal, we just have to hit uh, one more ember. Okay, Agumon needs evac Chumon goes out and a Hyper Fang puts Victory Bell in the red, but I get Stun Sport again. And it's fine, we just quick attack and she healed. Fuck. I switch in Palmon to take a hit and hopefully put this thing to sleep, which works, and it gives me a safe switch to Beomon. Gets a crit with Aerial Ace, finally toppling this terrifying plant. I Aerial Ace the Tangela, which poison powders, but I gave Beomon a Pecha Berry for this situation, and Tangela falls to another Aerial Ace. Vileplume is split right down the middle by an Aerial Ace, but it was able to get a Stun Spore off, so I'm back to praying. But I have to just hope to hit since most of my team is paralyzed or heavily damaged. Acid ends up doing very little. We connect with an Aerial Ace, we don't get paralyzed, and then we land a quick attack to win the fight. 
zero deaths in this battle. I definitely remember this fight completely wrong. I thought I was going to gloss over it because I thought I washed Erica, when in reality, she nearly pushed my shit in. We get the Giga Drain TM from Erica, which we just put on Palmon right away, and then evolve into Vileplume. After this, I go pick up Seedramon, and we do some spins in a basement, flailing about until we go and find Giovanni. Thankfully, Seedramon evolved into Gyarados right before this battle, so we're fine. This is what you get for looking at a trainer's team, assuming it will be a cakewalk in not grinding or leveling or whatever. After Gatsumon got so low, I had no good switches. If I just leveled up a little bit or even a lot since my level cap was 14 levels higher than the level Agumon was, I would have easily swept this fight. We salute the fallen, but we must move on. Giovanni manages to drop a whole damn scope as he runs away, so we can go fight some ghosts now. Alphamon joins the team, who I immediately make a Vaporeon, and I decide it needs Ice Beam, so it's time to gamble. While I'm gambling, unbeknownst to me, another streamer is watching Pokemon streamers and donating, I guess. I talked with him in my chat a little bit, not knowing any of this, and I'll just play this clip from his perspective. Of coins. <laughs> Gambling for DMs. If you get 777 uh, in the uh, next minute. Uh, what? Uh, Go. Oh shit! I was, <laughs> he just got 777. Nah, I gotta give him money now. I can't give him money! You don't Is have a place to get to money! Like... How am I supposed Can to I give like you money? Slow this down. Wait. Oh my uh, god. I I only knew about this because a little bit later, someone came into my chat and said, I, I have hopefully disabled that, because uh, I really don't mind if people post links and stuff. You don't have a place to get money. Oh, what the fuck? I, man. Bro, I'll give him my PayPal. We arrive back in Lavender Town, catch a ghastly and name it Gamamon, clear out the whole tower with no real trouble until... I get a little bit greedy. I swear my luck is terrible with odds unless I'm gambling at the slots in this game. I really hit myself twice in confusion in a row. I had safe switches though, so this is obviously 100% my fault and it's a single player game. The ones who started this journey falling like flies. I obtained the Poke Flute and then it's back to Celadon to obtain our big boy and he did not go quietly. I came close to running out of great balls on this thing, but the second to last one sealed it for us. And we welcome Big Mamemon to the team. We also get the Super Rod to the south of Lavender Town, which gets us a horsey on Route 13, naming it Vmon. I head back to Route 6, where fishing with a Super Rod will get us a Poliwhirl, which we named Sukamon, then to Vermilion, where we get a shelter named Gamamon that has the ability Shell Armor, which makes it so it can't get crit which is an amazing ability. While I never really planned to use most of these Pokemon, I captured them so that I would get enough Pokedex entry so that Professor Oak's aid between routes 11 and 13 would give me the item finder, which allows me to get some great stuff, like two leftovers from where the Snorlaxes were sleeping. I head to Saffron to take care of Team Rocket again, this time spinning my way floor to floor, and I clear out nearly all the random trainers and grunts, with my only close call being a wing attack doing more than I expect to Gatsumon. This is where, my friends, I do the dumbest thing possible. I decide I'm going to fight the completely optional dojo, which the reward Pokemon I can't even take because I'm planning to take the Lapras in the Silphco building, which counts as the encounter for Saffron as a whole. And at this point, I had stopped looking up just every trainer I was going to fight and decided we were only going to look up Bosch trainers. So I was flying completely blind. And you know what can happen when you fly blind. You can get struck down. It revenged me. Are you kidding me? I must have gotten pretty tilted from this because I was supposed to immediately go box Alphamon after he died. And I didn't. And it's not a rule break that like ends the run or anything. But it, it, even it put me at a greater disadvantage because I just have a dead Pokemon in my party. And it's even worse when lightning strikes twice. Okay, we just have to survive this. Oh no, no! How do I survive this? Other than Gammon, who can't be hit by Primeape, 
but he can't hit Primeape. Except he can. I realize that Gammon has Curse, which is not a ghost move. It is a question mark, question mark, question mark move. And so I end up just cursing this thing to death. I had taken a little bit of a break from streaming this challenge due to being sick. When I came back, I had a little bit of a change of plans because I wanted to finish the challenge soon rather than it taking a whole lot more time. I ended up deciding to mod in Rare Candies because I just didn't want this challenge to take a super long time and I was going to play it safe. I was just going to grind on like lower level Pokemon if I really had to. And the caveat or sort of like balancing factor of this is since I am using rare candies, I am not getting EVs from grinding. So it balances itself out and I'm playing a children's game with a rule set that is completely up to me to make. So I don't really care if people get mad about me using rare candies. This is also where I mentioned that I am evolving trade evolutions. So our first order of business is revenge. And I head back to the dojo and demand to fight its leader. Gamemon, now with the knowledge from Mr. Psychic and evolved to a Gengar, claps Black Belt Koichi in the name of his lost comrades. We swap Garurumon for Gatsumon, who's now a Golem, and return to Silfko to face our rival. Gamamon, who's now a Cloister, goes out first with leftovers and makes quick work of Pidgeot. I leave Gamamon in since I don't fear a crit, and I get a crit of my own taking out Execute. When Alakazam comes out, I decide to switch to Gamamon, predicting a future sight giving me a free Shadow Punch. Time for Blastoise. Swapping to Patamon, Blastoise protects and Future Sight fails. Patamon darts into the sky while Blastoise protects again, and we start chipping away as we get chipped back until we come out on top. Our final obstacle is Growlithe, who Gatsumon handles without any issue. We end up saving this guy's life, who Stinky just ignores, and he gives us a free Lapras. Welcome to the team Sorcerymon. Card key in hand, we clean up the grunts before heading to face Giovanni, but this fight should pan out a bit better than our last one. A bit is an understatement. We psychic through his whole team, his Kangaskhan killer of Agumon. Has no moves that can damage a ghost type, so it's pretty underwhelming. I make some slight changes to our team, but then we face Sabrina. I decided to do this battle first for no real reason other than I was already near the gym, but I also felt confident enough going into it that I only leveled my team to 39, so I had zero chance of overleveling. I lead with Sorcerymon, who has solid defense stats, and with its ability shell armor, we don't have to worry about crits. Sabrina leads Kadabra, which opens up with Calm Mind and then Future Sight, but this allows us to get off two Ice Beams, clearing it out. Mr. Mime comes in next, and we make the mistake of body slamming after it sets up Barrier. I try to set up Parish Song, and after taking a Psybeam Beam and a Future Sight, I switch to Big Mamemon to take out hits. Sabrina burns through her two Hyper Potions on Mr. Mime as we continue to Body Slam this Mr. Mime, until it ends up Baton Passing the Venomoth. It was only able to Baton Pass a single Calm Mind, so I'm not really worried. On its first turn, it hits us with Confuse Ray, which is not ideal, but we break through it twice to finish it off, only taking one Psybeam. The Mime returns for another Psybeam as we break out of Confusion to finish off with a Body Slam. When Alkazam comes out, I switch to Patamon. And he Calm Mines, which could be really bad, so I use Fly. And I end up being faster, which leads us to dodge at least the first Psychic, but not the second, ending Patamon's run. I compare Patamon's speed against Gamamon's to see if it can outspeed the Alkazam, but Patamon is actually six points faster, so I cannot be sure if I will outspeed it with Gamamon. I decide to risk it, since Gamamon has a slightly higher special defense and health, and I go for Shadow Punch. And Alkazam sees its own death in its future sight, getting us our fifth badge. We have to backtrack to get the bike here, and we stop at the department store again, and then bike south to face Koga, swapping Sandramon with Palmon for this fight. I don't know why I even make this switch, because Gamamon outspeeds and one-shots every single one of Koga's Pokemon, obtaining the 6th badge. After this, I end up going to the Safari Zone. And ahead of time, I'm sorry about the stuff over the game. I had messed with this overlay a bit, and all this footage is from the Twitch streams I was doing. I plan to try to record the game on its own to make these videos cleaner in the future, and it's something I have already implemented for recording gameplay. 
And if you want to see me mess up live, make sure to check out my Twitch in the description. While in the Safari Zone, I make sure to get the TM for Double Team, the Surf for HM, and the Gold Teeth. I have always found it odd that the two most important HMs in the game require the most out of the way process to get them in an optional area, so close to one another as well. But now that we have both of them, we can get a few more encounters that and finish out this game. I head to the power plant and I get the protect TM. As we head to Cinnabar Island, we grab the secret key and I use a moonstone to evolve Futmon the Ninarina that I caught back in the safari zone mostly to use his switch fodder for this upcoming fight. The main plan here is to use Gamamon to sweep, using my big boys to fill in when needed. Gamamon can't get crit, which helps us a lot, but it's part ice typing and abysmal special defense hurts us a bit here and can make this a bit of a dicey fight, but I really don't want to risk Lapras before the Elite Four. Gamamon starts strong with two surfs that outspeed both Growlithe and Ponyta for a one shot apiece. The real issue coming with Rapidash, which fire blasts us, dropping us to 14 HP and burning us, before going down to a Surf. We heal from leftovers before burn can take effect, but we would have lived with 1 HP either way, which is a just, ugh, scary. I quickly realized that none of the big boys I brought have good special defense, so I decide to use the fodder that I brought with me, Sandramon. But Arcanine ends up only hitting us with a takedown. I use Glare, expecting us to just get Fire Blast to pieces, but Sandramon is faster than Arcanine, and then he's able to eat a Fire Blast. I go for Acid as Blaine full heals, so I Glare and paralyze Arcanine again, but then Sandramon finally falls, and Gatsumon finishes the battle with an Earthquake for the win. As we exit the gym, Bill shows up, punches oh! us in the gut, throws a bag over our head and tosses us on his private boat, taking us to the Sevi Islands. We are informed that we are trapped here until Bill is done having his fun in the sun. We are even tasked with being an errand boy. All ridiculous. On top of this, since this happened as we left Blaine's gym, we are still holding a dead snake in our party. And since the PC network is down due to Celio making a switching loop in his network, we are stuck with five Pokemon until this is taken care of. On Two Island, we end up catching a Psyduck named Shoutmon before we get wrapped up in some biker gang business. The owner of the game corner is all worried about his kid, but of course, we are the ones who have to go figure out for him because his game corner is far too busy. Three Island looks to be a rather dull place, but there is a bit of a ruckus, so it might not be as bad as I think. The bikers are simply trying to make the island a little more lively of a place. I say more power to them, but as I walk up to help them bully the locals, they take me for an enemy and attack me all in a row. And they suck. Gatsuman sweeps all of these trainers. I end up in the berry forest where a small child who speaks in the third person confirms it's the child I am looking for, I guess. But then Hypno, whose Pokedex entry in Fire Red specifically, reads that it hypnotized and took away a child attempts to take this child from us. We slap Hypno shit and return the child, head back to one island where we can finally head back to Kanto. Wasting no time, I head to Viridian to finish our little song and dance with Giovanni, which is such a trouncing that we can skip over it, same with our final rival fight before the Elite Four. I had initially planned to run around to a few places to get some items, some other encounters, to really seal the victory, but instead I decided to add a completely untrained Psyduck to my team, evolve it into a Golduck, do zero EV training on it, don't even level my Pokemon to the cap because I got confused about the level cap, and start the Elite Four. My level cap was pretty all over the place here because I had it on my overlay 62 I believe, but there wasn't actually a Pokemon with level 62, either, you know, Lance or Stinky's highest level. It got me just so out of whack. But then I started against Lorelei with most of my team at 58 and did some adjustments with Rare Candies further in. It's like a little messy, but I didn't ever over-level any trainer, so I consider it fine. Lorelei opens up with Dugong, and I send out Big Bombimon. And I did pick up the TM for double team like I mentioned, 
which Big Mommy Mon learned, and we set up six of those to start this battle before we just started brick breaking and body slamming. We get hit a few times, but with a combination of Big's evasiveness and the leftovers, we finished this battle on full HP, but with a bit more PP wasted than I would have liked. Next, we got Natty or Not Bruno. I open up with Shoutmon, surfing the Onyx, and to be frank, I'm not sure what my plan was here. Hitmonchan comes out next, and I must have thought I could set up on this thing somehow, but I get hit by a crit sky uppercut which nearly one-shots me, forcing me to switch. I switch in Gamamon, which is able to just, you know, nullify a mock punch. I land a Psychic, Bruno full restores, and then a Confuse Ray. Hitmonchan then hits itself in confusion, so I get a free Psychic, but it's not quite enough to kill. So I have to switch to keep Gengar healthy, and Palmon finishes it with a Bullet Seed. Hitmon Lee comes out, and I get a free switch back to Gengar, then getting a Confuse Ray off again, but getting hit with Foresight through the confusion. In this footage, I think it looks like I just decide to risk this, but in reality, I had forgotten what Foresight did, so I ended up taking a Mega Kick. I know I'm faster, but I just end up not wanting to risk anything. Bringing in Gatsumon, dodging a Mega Kick, and then bringing in Garurumon, which intimidates, and then we eat a Brick Break before extreme speeding the Hitmonlee to death. Then comes out the big bad, Machamp, but I have a plan. I switch in Gatsumon, expecting a Rock Tomb, but it's a bulk up instead, which is not a part of the plan. But that is okay, because the AI is sort of predictable here. I can use a combination of Gaimamon to nullify cross shops and Gatsumon to take out rock tombs until he is out of cross shops, then kill him with Gatsumon. But in doing this process, he uses bulk up a few more times than I would have liked or expected. And while I do hit him into the yellow, I hit him too far into the yellow, and he gets full restored. Great. As I am whittling him down with Gatsumon, the boosted rock tombs are just too much, and my rock man looks like he's about to have a rock death. I try to switch in big Mamimon, but one rock tomb does half his HP. So I switch again, but to Palmon. Acid does nothing, but a Mega Drain gets us back to nearly full, letting us finish Machamp with a Bullet Seed, leaving only an Onyx, which goes down to a single Mega Drain. I end up replacing Double Team with Earthquake on Big Mamimon, which I quickly realize is a mistake, and teach Garurumon Overheat as well. Agatha starts with a Gengar, and I lead Garurumon, two-shotting it with Flamethrower. I'm able to get a Flamethrower off on the Golbat she sends in, but I end up getting confused. Me thinking I can surely hit through confusion, taking my track record in account, I try to Flamethrower again, eating two air cutters and hitting myself twice when I could have just switched to Gatsuma. I decide to switch to Big Mamimon, who easily eats an air cutter and lands a shockwave for the KO. Arbok comes out and intimidates us next, and a sludge bomb does chunk us, but two earthquakes evict the snake. Palmon comes out next after Gengar comes out, dodging two hypnosis and landing a sleep powder. Of course, I only get one turn of sleep, and Gatsuma gets hit with a hypnosis. Gururumon comes out to intimidate, making it so that Nightmare does nothing, and because we have a Chesto Berry, we can overheat and barely not kill. We end up going to Shoutmon, who also falls asleep and takes a Nightmare. I then play Chicken with the Cursing Haunter, but I get royally fucked by a full restore. This is where we salute, hit Sleep Powder, and watch Palamon go down with the ship, or, you know, just die. Gamamon comes out next gets mean looked, and a double dream eater to the grave. Gatsumon is my next piece of expected fodder, but she manages to wake up and finish off the Haunter with a rock slide. I don't risk it and switch, and Gengar gets fully restored. Great. Big Mamimon dodges two Hypnosis and is able to eat a few sludge bombs due to his leftovers, letting us kill this thing in a few shockwaves. Lance is next, and Shoutmon is my hope, thinking I can calm mine set up on the Dragon Rage and Gyarados until it hyper beams. In hindsight, I should have Blizzard. Big Mamimon comes out while Gyarados recharges, and I just start blasting. 
Aerodactyl goes down with only getting us just to blow half, and out comes Dragonite. It uses Safeguard, giving me a free switch, and I get a Rock Slide before getting chunked by an Outrage. I then end up switching to Big Mamimon again, who eats two Outrages and then I rest. I get some bad luck when it comes to sleep turns, but then I get a solid turn where he hits himself in confusion and I wake up, getting a Body Slam to finish him off. His Dragonair's pushovers, both falling to two Earthquakes, finishing the Elite Four, but with half of our team dead. Looking at the three I have, I feel okay going into this fight, but it is still a 3v6. Stinky and I start this battle like we did at Nugget Bridge with Pidgeot and Gatsumon. My Rock Throw barely doesn't kill, and instead of using a full restore, he switches to Rhydon, which I barely don't kill with a Strength and an Earthquake. He decides to full restore after dropping my speed, so I hit him low again, and I eat an Earthquake from him that drops me to the yellow, but I finish him off. Blastoise is out next, and I know I can get more utility out of Gatsumon, so I switch to Big. Blastoise bites for some reason, maybe seeing a kill, but I doubt it. Uh, it uses Rain Dance on the next turn as I land a crit shockwave. Blastoise lands a strong hydro pump as I get some damage with another shockwave. I switch to body slam and eat one more hydro pump before finishing it off. Pidgeot returns, I shockwave, unsure if it's going to heal, and it does, and Big Buzz does barely a fourth. I decide to rest, which gives Pidgeot time to aerial ace and feather dance me until I wake up slamming. I go with Shockwave to make sure that attack drop doesn't keep me from killing, and we're halfway there. Alkazam is next, which is terrifying. Nothing I have can take a crit from this thing. I end up doing a misplay here for sure, and I sack Gatsumon. No matter what I needed to try, I needed to use Big Mamimon to kill this thing, and resetting my attack stat might have been worse for me overall. So I almost killed Alkazam with a Body Slam, and I paralyzed it, meaning I am now paralyzed because of Synchronize, and then Stinky just full restores while I Shockwave expecting him to just attack for some reason. This is a really bad spot. Crit is Doom, I end up taking a Depression Nap, but not before surviving a Psychic that drops my Special Defense. The good thing is we are no longer paralyzed in full health. The bad thing is we now have to pray we survive our slumber. He has the gall to set up Reflect while we sleep and hits two more Psychics before we can Body Slam him again. But we paralyze again, meaning we are paralyzed again. Big hangs on through another Psychic and manages to never get fully paralyzed, letting a needless crit finish this off. I think for a moment, and I hail Mary go for rest, since I really don't think switching is worth it, and Big finally goes down. Easily the MVP of the Elite Four. Gururumon comes out as the final Mon in the party, but he has a solid advantage here. I decide to go for Overheat to guarantee the kill, because I just did not trust Flamethrower. And I assumed we weren't going to need to use fire type moves anymore since we were ending this battle with a mirror match. Stinky goes for an extreme speed after sending in Arcanine as I go for a double edge. And that's when I realize we might not win this war of attrition because we are barely keeping a health lead. We are losing in health before leftovers proc and I realize, oh, that's scary. I, yeah, I just have to hope for, I have to crit him, I think. I think I just have to hope for a crit. <laughs> well, uh, I won. <laughs> what a way for that to end. A mirror match with me on my final Pokemon with my back against the wall. This challenge was certainly a bit up and down, with some of it being a breeze and a few parts being dicey, but that helped keep it from being too much of a slog, I'd say. Fire Red is a wonderful first game to do a hardcore Nuzlocke of, and it made me want to try something more difficult, which, if you've caught any of my recent streams of Storm Silver, or my Black Electric monologue attempts, I might have bitten off more than I can chew for these. 
but I am also enjoying learning the intricacies of these games and getting better at playing these Pokemon games in these ways. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm planning to do more hardcore Nuzlocks in the future, and I'm currently doing attempts on Storm Silver over on my Twitch, so make sure to go follow me there to catch any of my suffering. I'm likely to do some other Nuzlocks of the base games to break up my attempts with Storm Silver, since I don't see myself conquering that game for some time. I also don't have a quirky outro line, so follow my socials. Goodbye.